like to take a second to thank you for watching this video. Maybe a little different focus here and, and maybe a different way of thinking about some things. Uh, how am I going to tie in a Trojan horse story with an LMS discussion? Um, got a few things I, I think make sense for that and, and I hope that you'll bear with me as I try to maybe explain the overall thought process that I had when I looked at these two things as being uh, intertwined so to speak. You can see here kind of what our goals and, and focus and objectives are but we just started with my big campus at this district. I've been here for a year and after spending some time looking around at some of the things that were uh, frustrating from a teacher side and, and some of the things that our, our district's trying to do our district technology team is trying to, to do and managing things and uh, you know balancing that act of uh, how do we make sure that teachers have what they need and students have what they need versus keeping everybody safe following the laws and, and working within the the confines of what we have as far as an infrastructure so it's been kind of a unique uh, journey so to speak and uh, really had some eye-opening things when I went to the Lightspeed user conference in Austin uh, back about a month ago it was really a good eye-opener for me to be able to think about things just a little bit different. As a technology integration you know, person from my district, it's important to try to find ways that, that you can keep everybody happy. I, I want to keep our guys in, in technology happy, and I want to keep teachers and students happy. Um, and my big campus really offers us a lot of things, a lot of answers to questions and problems that we had within our district. So that's kind of how I'm going to approach this. I think that, that looking at this LMS like my big campus and uh, as a Trojan horse, it's almost my way to sneak certain technology integration things into our, our schools and into our classrooms, uh, almost kind of undercover, so to speak. Um, we've got you know teachers at, at all levels, like every district does. We've got our teachers that are you know terrified of technology, and we've got our teachers that are frustrated because they can't do enough with it because of the limitations you know that we have between devices and, and uh, the structure and everything else. So um, every district faces those same battles. But the the thing I like about using an LMS to start that process of integration with those teachers that are, are maybe a little bit behind is the fact that it gives us a nice clean package and a nice safe way to do it and, and kind of lead and, and spoon feed teachers uh, into the things that we want to do. We all understand the, the overall concept of what this learning management system is here for and how it works and sharing things and you know all the main reasons uh, that we would be looking at a learning management system and you can read some of that below here in this bundle. But this this concept here of the video really it just made sense to me um, and so that's that's the whole point behind the Trojan horse idea and the title and, and with this video is it's going to be our way to introduce a lot of technology ideas to our teachers and we're going to do it through modeling my big campus use with those teachers in a teacher to teacher and administrator to teacher role as opposed to just showing them a lot of ways here's what you can do with your students uh, to use this feature and, and talk about each feature and, and the benefits of that. Now the purpose of this video though is I do want to talk about some of those hidden features, those hidden benefits that come from using a learning management system and, and that are some of the things that get me excited about our, our process here as we, as we you know, start getting ramped up for the school year. We've got three main, main things in our district that are, are big uh, pushes or initiatives right now. Uh, differentiation is, has always been there and it's it's always an important concept and we're always looking to, for ways to help teachers uh, think about differentiation as they as they build lessons. The Fundamental Five is another key um, book that we've had a book study on and um, you know the, the concepts, the core concepts within the Fundamental Five are, are just solid good educational practices. And then of course we have the, the continued growth with our professional learning communities. So those are the three areas that I'm going to kind of discuss in my big campus and, and how I think those things can be addressed within it. So it's not really going to be a, a how-to and, and showing you, you know, the ways to, to click and, and move around in my big campus. It's going to be more addressing how I see these things being addressed and, and used within my big campus. So to do that, I'd start within a group, and, and I've got a couple groups here, as you can see. But I am going to start within my Photoshop Basics training group because in differentiation we've got groups, discussions, pages, and schoolwork that are three really easy 
avenues for teachers to differentiate things. So if I was going to create a discussion, I can really easily go in here and add a discussion piece. The beauty of it is right here I can restrict it to certain people. So instant built-in differentiation. I've got certain topics that I want to challenge certain students with, and maybe I've got other topics that I want to uh, approach differently with different students. So I can create several different discussion pieces with students. They work on it one-on-one, -on -one, uh, kind of with me, or they work on it in groups, and I may have three or four students in there that are all going to be answering the same piece and getting you know that, that different instruction. Um, pages work very similar. When I go into pages and if I edit my pages or add a page, I now have the ability to allow certain members of that group to view the pages, to edit the pages, and, and even giving some of them the ability to delete pages if I wanted to. But right here, by restricting certain views, I can create pages just for small groups of students. So an easy way to build in differentiation in the classroom. And then, of course, you have schoolwork. And with your schoolwork, that's a really simple way to go in and, and assign that only to certain people. And so, again, a really easy concept for you to take uh, with, with teachers and, and showing them how to differentiate that. And, of course, we could do that in, in other ways with, within teacher-to-teacher -teacher groups, even if they really had a reason to. A principal could have an entire campus staff in one group, but he only wants to talk to the English people in discussion, so he only, he only puts the, those people in that discussion topic. Um, not necessarily differentiation, but segmentation, I guess, would be a better way of calling that. Now let's talk about the fundamental five a little bit. When you talk about framing a lesson, we've got bundles. Um, what, what better way to frame a lesson than be able to have your objective stated right at the beginning of that bundle? You assign that out to your students, and it has uh, a nice clean package of everything right there. Of course, the, the book gets more in-depth in kind of what it really wants to accomplish with framing the lesson, but bundles are a perfect way to do that. Working in the power zone, we have to stretch that a little bit in a digital environment because, of course, that's talking about proximity in a classroom to certain students and, and moving around and working in the area where your students are as opposed to maybe to being behind your teacher desk. But think about it. From anywhere in my classroom, if I'm in my big campus, if I'm in a group again, I can very easily put myself in a position uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one message with students. Hey, get back on task. You're not doing what you need to do. Or I can go into, uh, you know, from a, the whole concept of being at home, I'm absent, my, my kid's sick, and I can then message those students and, and actually get proximity when I can't do it physically uh, because I'm not even in the, in the building. But I can do that from a, a different environment. I can get in the power zone working with students. Again, maybe a little bit of a stretch in a digital environment for what the textbook really means within that concept. Um, the next part of the fundamental five is frequent small group purposeful talk about the learning. Again, I have the chat room features. Um, that would be a, an easy way to have some small group you know, topics depending on your class sizes that could get too big. But again, we can go right back into discussions and we have that ability to segment those and then have smaller groups set up if we wanted to. Um, again, that, that, that whole point in the book is trying to get students face to face to communicate with each other and, and to be able to have that chance to process the learning and, and really make it their own and be able to then uh, you know, spit that back out to, to other students or to other people uh, so they have a, a chance to you know, make that learning their own and, and not just sit back and have to listen. We know that when they're engaged and they have to talk, things are going to be much better off. The other beautiful thing that you have there is your whole blog idea. Um, we could simply have students blogging, uh, maybe not a, as true of a communication piece, but through those blogs, they're going to be able to go ahead and, and get some of that frequent, frequent talk. Um, another piece of the fundamental five is writing critically, and I think that's really where blogging and the ability to have people then comment on your blogs is you know, very unique and, and a way for people to be able to get in and uh, and, and have that conversation and within the writing critically refuting and defending and clarifying um, you know a student has a blog article that they've written other students you know maybe start talking and, and bringing up things that maybe they left out of the argument and, and the student can then go back and clarify within the comments of their own blog article um, and again you've got the discussion pieces that we've already talked about and you've even got my big campus documents we can share those documents so student A is going to go ahead and you know, start the story and, and have whatever sort of writing piece that they want. 
other students then that they share it with could go ahead and go in and make comments on that. So that would give you another avenue uh, to be able to deal with the writing critically part of that. And then of course, you know, within the, the, the uh, profile pages of, of people, whoops, I thought I'd go with my profile page there. Didn't mean to spit up my picture of myself, but you know, recognition and reinforcements, the next part of the fundamental five, and I mean, a perfect thing with achievements built in here uh, to be able to go ahead and, and give students some feedback that way. I mean, kids love that kind of stuff. So my big campus addresses the recognition and reinforcement, but even more importantly, when you get into grading and, and looking at schoolwork with uh, people, that's another great way uh, to be able to deal with the reinforcement. When I go into grade, I can simply go here and add comments to the grades, and students can comment back and forth with me about that topic. You know, too often when we grade a hard copy of papers, we may make our red marks all over that paper and give our thoughts. We give it to the student, but we really don't ever, and I shouldn't say ever, but we often don't give them a chance to write and, and comment on that and give it back to us because we've already given it out with the grade. They put it in their notebook or their, their backpack, and it's gone, and we never have that that back and forth dialogue and of course the time commitments in a classroom where you only have them for so long restrict a lot of that. This with the students having 24-7 access that conversation can be going on over several days that, that gives them that opportunity. So the fundamental five is hit in, in just so many different ways. The last part that I, I wanted to address here is the whole concept of the professional learning communities. So, you know, here's a, a group that my superintendent has started, and I'm an admin of this group. So I've got the ability to, to deal with the shared resources, and I can go in and add uh, things through my drive and uh, my big campus library and everything else, and we can share documents back and forth. A very powerful, simple thing that you can do with your professional learning groups. Um, principals then, you know, we've got an English one professional learning community, the principal could be a part of that group also through my big campus and see the things that are being shared, see the lesson materials that are in there, and, and be able to, he can be a part of every, or she could be a part of every group on campus. And, and again, it gives them a unique way where they may not be able to be a part of everybody's meetings, but they can see those. Maybe, you know, one of the, the members of the uh, professional learning group every time they meet starts a discussion topic and takes notes in there for the rest of the group and for those that can't be in attendance. Um, we talk about the whole concept in a professional learning community and, and the big benefit is the ability to look at data together um, to be able to analyze the data from benchmark tests and regular schoolwork. Of course, in my big campus, in your drive, you go into your schoolwork again, you've got the ability to track those things with reports. Um, just, I mean, incredible things that can be done because we can add the standards to each of these questions right here and get our state you know state tracking of all of that or all of our state standards we can be tracking all of those things even with just simple things like entry and exit tickets so you can have your entry and exit ticket very simple short pieces where you can now actually keep all of those things combined and, and keep the standards and run reports that are, that are you know improving every day in my big campus um, and hopefully are going to be released pretty quick so you can literally track the standards with everything you're doing and then you can take those reports back and share and you know teachers can learn with each other you know how did you get this point across your students are doing so much better on it and having those those important conversations that those important pieces are there but we really want to look and we want to know that or we want to remember that when we're trying to integrate technology we don't want it to be something new and, and difficult that they have to do we want it to be seamless we want to attach it to all of the good educational practices that are going on in your district without technology. Now we can kind of basically, again, sneak attack them and show them how that can be used with my big campus and with technology. And, and it, it just really makes it more powerful as you're trying to uh, get that buy-in and, and get that support and, and get people on board with the process that it's going to take for the learning of it. And, and having to do it. But as integrators, we can sneak attack and we can actually start to show those things. We can differentiate within our own groups with other with our other peers. Um, we can use the concepts of the fundamental five when we're talking and, and sharing ideas about different educational uh, policies or, or discussions that come up. And, and I think that's where the Trojan horse really makes a lot of sense. Um, not that we, we have to be sneaky with people, but 
there's so many things that are going to happen as you just start using it with your staff. So as an integrator, trying to talk to other integrators, I hope that, that you can uh, build on that and share other ideas with us because ultimately that's, that's where it, it comes in. Teachers being able to see it used in authentic ways is going to make a big difference for you when you're uh, getting them in the, and as they're working on trying to use it with students. So that is essentially why your LMS is a modern day educational Trojan horse. Again, a little bit corny, but I think it makes a lot of sense. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for tuning in.